I'm Julie Drew, and I'm so glad that you could join me to see my virtual art show, The Northern Lights. Um, I'm so glad that I could have this opportunity, and I've wanted to do this um, since I started do, um, painting these um, in early February. I, uh, in, uh, the, um, the Aurora Borealis is something I've always wanted to see, and it was I, I was able to see it this year. Well, my daughter woke me up so we could go see the red alert out in um, Sherwood Park, which is, or past Sherwood Park, which is about 45 minutes east of here. Uh, and in the middle of the night, I've um, wanted to see them, but it's been hard to see them because I'm always asleep. For some reason, <laughs> they only show at night in the dark. So I was able to do that. And, and so here we have some um, of the Northern Lights we got to see. And you can see the bands of color and they were, there was a lot of green. Oops. <laughs> it was a lot of green and it was, um, some of it was uh, rippling across with vertical lines, like a color, bands of color of white and pink and orange. And they would just ripple across the green horizontal bands and, and making all these beautiful colors. So I used all those in making the paintings. It was really cold that night. Um, so I thought about you doing it as a frost paintings. Uh, it's something that I try every year to do frost paintings. Um, it's because you know, if you think about the, the windows that we have, um, when it gets cold and we get that kind of patterns on the window, you know, the old Jack Frost picture uh, that go ahead and um, get to that. And we have, <laughs> They have the beautiful modeled look, or there's the, uh, in, we have, this is the one from our bathroom. When it's really cold, it gets these lovely other beady kind of looks um, and string. I love that, but I haven't been able to capture that with paint yet, but I can do the feathers, the feathery look and the modeled look with the paint. And so that's what I was um, capturing with the paintings. In um, in January, when it was a little cooler, it wasn't quite the minus 28 that we saw the Northern Lights at, um, I went out and painted um, on our, uh, um, I went out and painted a plain air painting. And I was, um, as I was painting, the, the, um, the paint dry, um, the, the paint froze on my palette and in the, and in the, um, on the paper and it made these wispy uh, blue in the sky, almost like cloud-like looks uh, in the sky and in the trees. It was like perfect for that painting. And you can see it on that slide there. And, the, um, and so I set up to the first paintings I did for this series, I set up on my deck with my new easel and with a, you can see the steam rising from the water and um, in it, and I worked on this painting and this painting, the first layers. And um, but most of my time when I paint, it's in the dark. Uh, it's dark out. It's because it's like five o'clock in the morning. So I decide to do more of them inside, and then to run outside and put the paint out when it's um, uh, while it's still wet. And that's part of the frozen process. My favorite painting is this one here. Uh, it's my um, frosty northern lights, and it's because the this part of the painting uh, in a close up, you can see that it's got the modeled look up at the top of it, and this part is all really feathery, uh, um, the kind of feathery frost pattern. And uh, so I I have a little video of this and kind of going through the process of the painting. Um, and uh, just, and I'll talk through it as, as I go. So putting the paper down uh, with the masking, I um, used a toothbrush to uh, spray on where the salt of uh, the, the stars are going to be. And then really got the, the paper wet so that the paint would move with the, with the, um, water that's embedded into the paint and also needed to stay wet long enough so I could get it outside. Before I actually got the, it wet, I would make the paint 
um, into little cups and really lots of water so that it, it had really deep colors. I would test the colors and make sure that they were strong enough. So when I add them with the water, it, it'll always lighten them up a little bit. I worked on a, a slant so that is gravity to make it work, um, to make those uh, vertical lines going down into the sky, which it's upside down so that they're actually going down, but it's, we'll turn it over in a minute and uh, it'll be upside right. But it, just making the gravity work is, uh, you can see all the, the edges coming down uh, and blending together. I had to do layers on, on top of the layers uh, just to keep on getting it dark enough and, um, and just uh, watch that, uh, creating that, that sense of movement in the sky. And, uh, you know, I would come back in with some damp brush and, and work that. I added salt here if I needed to. This painting didn't actually have salt in it, but, um, and then I scraped off the masking and I, I worked on the ink and the watercolor with the, to finish it up with the, um, the trees and the land and make that happen. It was really interesting for working with the with the um, pieces because the the um, the paint kind of stayed on the surface, and so um, so like in the different paintings, I had to really be careful when I went back in to do the landscape, or if I wanted to, to fix anything in the sky, I had to be really careful because the paint the paint would move too much and it would lift off what I had before. So moving on to another painting, with the, let me, um, it's called Glorious Heavens. And that's this one, the one I started on the, on the deck. And I did another layer, so another um, pouring layer, and used salt this time. And so you can kind of see the different layers within um, the painting from the first layer to the second layer, and um, just made more movement in the sky. And in the bottom of this one, um, you can see that I used what's called a saran wrap technique on top of the snow. That's, that's what that looks like uh, in the finished part. So it kind of has those kind of lines and lights and darks in it. And uh, I use that when the paint is wet um, and put the saran wrap down and it makes kind of a really cool texture for the land. This one is um, Dancing Lights, number two, and it's got lovely feathery, uh, where, the, where the colors are mixing together, it really feathered out these, those edges. And, um, and we have a detail of this one that goes a little bit more into this area, and this is more of a mottled area here and more feathery in, inside that has that frost look to it. And then I also did a watercolor painting for the trees and the, and the um, in the bottom, in the base, the bottom of it. I have another one, um, Dancing Lights 3. I like that title, can you tell? And it's, um, you know, kind of the modeled look up here. There's a lovely uh, uh, feathery section here. But this time I, um, I used ink when I did it instead of uh, the watercolor when I did the trees. And you can see on this one also that I, I pushed the paint around a little bit with a, with a, just a damp brush and moved it and made the hills and, and the lines and the hills just by moving with a damp brush and no new paint. This one is um, the Northern Lights on handmade paper. It's a St. Amand's paper. It's a little thicker than um, what I usually do uh, when I, I make paper myself, but sometimes it's fun to use other people's handmade paper as well. So this one has a nice rough texture that creates a texture within the sky all by itself. And um, I did ink on the lower part of this painting. So, and then we have Dancing Lights number four. That's this one. And this one was different in that um, when I put the, when it was really wet into wet and I went to take it outside to um, put salt on it, 
I, um, I leaned it up against the house and the salt, the gravity made the, the salt come down in streaks. So, um, so it kind of made it kind of like a meteor effect or that sort of kind of fun um, effect. And I have a detail of, of whoops, too fast. I have a detail of um, trees and watercolor. So just making that um, happen in with watercolor. And then we have this one here, which is um, on my handmade paper. So I made the paper a long while ago and, and then painted on it. And it doesn't have as much sizing as watercolor paper. So the, the paint sinks down a little bit more. Um, so it creates a different kind of texture for the um, lights in the sky. But there's um, a, some detail with the, right in here, I threw the salt on it as well, and and it really actually worked better um, for having it going outside in the freezing because the salt expanded and made those lovely little subtle um, effect in the tree in the uh, sky right there. And uh, again, I used the ink on the handmade paper because I love the um, texture that it can give with ink and on the handmade paper. And uh, so then we have, it started getting warmer outside. And so we, I lost the freezing, being able to take it out and, and, and freezing the temperature. So I decided to try out my deep freeze. And, um, with, and I checked the temperature in it in my deep freezer. And I did this little tiny painting and put it in the freezer to see if it would have the same effect. And it does, it just doesn't have it quite as brilliant. But it's uh, it still had some of the effect. It's a little more of a contained environment because you don't have the wind or uh, any of those other things going on, and it's um, it was a real fun little project to do, um, and that was called Deep Breeze. Uh, and then we have Singing Skies. It got warmer. We went out to see the Aurora Borealis for another red alert. And we didn't see it very well because the moon was really huge and bright. And so it, it overpowered any Aurora Borealis that was there. And, um, but I got to see how the landscape looks without the snow at dark in the night like that. And think about how, how I can do these paintings. So this one, I put some of the pond the, um, as the snow melts. We have lots of water everywhere. And so this one I did that way. And that has a really lovely modeled look in the sky. And um, you can see that, it, you know, how it makes those, the paint goes almost in, in uh, splotches so that it makes that kind of modeled effect, which is really kind of cool. And then we have this really large one here where I did the landscape where you can see um, in just, uh, I, I, you might recognize part of this if you have been watching my newsletter or my w posts, because um, I had uh, butterflies flying across this one at Easter time, <laughs> and, but I hadn't finished the bottom yet. So, <laughs> but it, it, this one has a lovely um, a froze, uh, frost section here with a feathery uh, look, and these are salt bits right here where the salt just kind of did a, it looks like falling snow or something. This one I call singing skies. And, um, and then the close up of the landscape. So you can kind of almost see where I, I did a, a layer of that saran wrap underneath um, using some of the, the colors from above into the bottom here. And then I, I just put in the dark blacks of and dark greens to to make that rest of the landscape come alive. So that was a real quick tour and I didn't even do all of the different pictures, but I wanted to just give you a taste of what they are and they have, you can see there's some um, snow on this one and some, some other kind of looks to these other ones here, um, just kind of flowing around. And um, you can see all of them a little bit closer um, by going to uh, my website and it's in my store and the link is in the description. So if you'd like to take a look at them, they're all available. I have some more videos coming um, to this channel and um, just 
real excited to see all this is um I, and i just thank you for coming and do you want to tell me if there's any greetings or questions that i could answer uh, well, we have uh, greetings from uh, Winston Billing saying that looks really cool the way it works. Um, and Taylor Gatto said the uh, science and art combined, very cool. Cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And Martina uh, Key says she wants to try this in wintertime. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have a class in the fall when it's really cold. <laughs> Um, Winston Billings asks, how do you do wet into wet? Ah, good question. So wet into wet is doing, um, so the whole, the, I get the paper really wet and I kind of really work it in and then I'm putting wet paint on. So, and when I'm pouring it or doing a really wet brush of paint over the top and it kind of really moves with the, um, and it, it, it's a way of making the colors move with the water. And they kind of bleed, you know, from one to the other color. Any other questions? Um, were there any significant differences between using ink and watercolor? Well, the detail. I, I can get pretty tight, uh, pretty small with the brush. I've, so like this one is done with the watercolor, but I get even smaller with, a, with an ink pen and so the if I especially when I'm working so small it's kind of nice to work with an ink pen um, trying to get all the little detail and uh, still have it visible what kind of salt do you use so I do use um, I used table salt for these but you can also use um, a rock salt um, I've tried pickle salt and um, Himalayan salt, and that, but they make really big um, uh, spaces. Uh, they're better if I want to do flowers or something larger. Like if you think of dandelions, that's what they end up looking like on your on your um, wet into wet. And were there any uh, difficulties when you first started these paintings? Uh, yes, um, some of these have others on the other side that didn't work. So <laughs> I actually did a lot more than 19 paintings, but I didn't show you the, all the flubs. Um, sometimes the when I because when I went back in to try to to fix them, I wanted to make them darker. Um, they would just get streaky, or that I would lift off too much color. So I so these are the best results. <laughs> And, and um, but it's a, it's interesting process. Um, so I tried to mix all the color really dark to begin with because it was pretty much going to be what it was when I was done. Because uh, actually, if as I let it sit longer, like over a couple months, it was easier to work with. So I could actually come back in and do some painting on it. It's almost like the the frost had to settle into the paint into the um, paper. So, because it just really sat on top. In fact, when I brought them in, they you, they would actually still look wet. Um, they would, and so I would take them back outside, bring them in, take them back outside until they were dry enough to stay in the house without melting too much too fast. So, thank you for joining me, and um, that's all I have for today. And you can. Um, Contact me or do it in the chats, and I can respond to more questions in the chat. Bye.